I've worked here for 11 years, and I work in Pastor Sexton's office for quite a while, and I've done some financial things and just whatever they've needed me to do. But the most important thing that I believe that I've ever done is work with children. And um, I'm very passionate about that. My husband and I have been married for 25 years, and we took our first um, junior age Sunday school class the week after we were married. So we've been working with children ever since. So, but um, very passionate about it. I think it's the greatest work that you could ever do. And if I can convince anybody in here to work with children the rest of their life, that's my passion. Because I believe we need to re reach this next generation. And I believe if we don't reach this next generation, our country's gonna be in serious shape. So, but anyway, we'll start in prayer and we'll show, I'll show you some things from God's word and um, some things we do on Friday, I think afternoon or in the morning time, I'm going to be teaching on training children to serve. And it's kind of a conclusion from this and it's some practical things about how to get children to serve. And so today we're gonna talk about a few things about can children serve the Lord? How do we treat them? How do we expect them to do? So and we're gonna see what God has to say about it. So I'm gonna open in a word of prayer and then we'll get going. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. And I thank you that your son died for us. And I thank you for Jesus dying on the cross to pay for all sin. And that the, le the ground is level at the cross, no matter if it's a child or someone that's elderly. Lord, I thank you for that. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, Lord, to speak today. Fill my mind and help me with my speech that I'll say exactly what you've given me to say, not one word more, not one word less. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, I hope you have your Bibles with you today. Listen, there's no better place to teach children than the Word of God. Um, I teach all of our teachers that. My husband and I are over the children's ministry. If you're just coming in, feel free. Just come on in. I was running a little bit behind myself. So you just make yourself right at home. But um, my husband and I, David, lead our children's ministry. And he's got a torn Achilles tendon, can't be here today, or else he would be here. So, but um, we have 16 Sunday school classes and that we are over. And it's a, we have a first hour, we have a foundations for life, and we have what we call Brave Boys and Girls second hour. So we have three different segments that we do, and we work with children on all different kinds of levels. But today we're going to talk a little bit about continuing God's work through children. Have you ever thought about that? How are you gonna continue God's work through children? God's word always passed from one generation to the next. Every single time in Exodus, what did their fathers told their sons and their sons told their sons? And that's the way God's word works. And my, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it's probably my life verse, is 2 Timothy, if you'll turn there, 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 16. And the Bible says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. What it, the Bible says in that from a child thou hast known, and we're talking about Timothy here. But I want to ask you some questions before we get started good. What are children capable of accomplishing in the work of the Lord? Just coming to Sunday school? Just sitting there and listening to a Bible lesson? What are children really capable of? What do you expect from them? When they come, if you're a Sunday school teacher or maybe you're a parent here, what do you expect from your children? Do you expect your children to dress up right and wear ties? but not know the word of God? Do you expect your children to come and sit and listen and be good disciplined, but never open their heart? What do you expect from your children? The one you're teaching, my husband and I don't have children, but in a sense, we have many children. And so God's given us working with inner city for a long time. 
and with we work with church children families all those kinds so they're all level but what are you expecting from them are they only capable of coming to Sunday school what are our expectations of a child let's look at what Jesus says about it turn to Matthew 21 16 if you would and here I'll set the stage for you Jesus is chasing the um, people out of the temple because they were making money and making his house a place of merchandise and if you'll look in Matthew 21 16 and we'll back up to 15 and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did the children crying in the temple saying Hosanna to the son of David they were sore displeased so here's these children they're singing and they're crying and they're saying it with all their heart the Bible doesn't say they were just speaking it the Bible says they were crying it Hosanna to the son of David and look in verse 16 and said unto him hearest thou what these say they're like hey Jesus are you hearing what these kids say are you hearing it these are just little kids they don't know anything what is that yea ye have never read out of the mouth listen to this very carefully out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfect perfected praise you think Jesus approved of children do you think Jesus approved of them praising and glorifying him that's right he did and they were doing it think about this here's these religious leaders they knew all of the Word of God they had it memorized they had all those things done and you know what the children because they were acting in faith and trusted God believing God for who he was God Jesus said listen I'm pleased with these these people that know the scriptures and these philosophers that doesn't impress me what children do impress me you know and that's pretty interesting <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and children understood excuse me <clears throat> sorry my throat I've been having this cold stuff a little bit Let me take another drink here <coughs> children understood the truth of who Jesus was and glorified him yet the religious leaders were half-hearted self-seeking and critical they were critical they were half-hearted they were self-consumed listen there's nothing that that disappoints me more when I see another Christian especially an adult push a child aside like they cannot do something for God I don't think God's pleased with that I think he's upset with that we need to teach children to know God teach them to know God there's a difference we need to teach them the stories of the Bible but we need to teach them the truth of that Bible story we need to teach them to know God listen have you ever met a child that knows every story many stories in the book in the Bible about Jonah and the whale but what do they know about the truth about Jonah what do they know about the truth about different things what are you teaching in your Sunday school class what are you teaching your grandchildren your children themselves do they know all the right answers but yet don't know the biblical truth teach start when you I I um, challenge you to start teaching out of the Word of God curriculums are nothing more than a commentary nothing more than a commentary take the Word of God and pull a biblical truth and then take stories and illuminate that biblical truth is that not the way Jesus taught with parables he started with the biblical truth and then he illuminated it and children can understand the word you say but the word of God is so hard for children to understand no it's not no it's not 300 children get taught in one rally from inner city kids every single week guess what we use for curriculum the Bible that's what we use go figure revolution right and so Jesus remember the Bible's written for all human beings no matter what age they are 
even the smallest preschool child can learn that Jesus loves them. And that's the biblical truth. So make sure you're doing that. And I wanted us to look at one thing. I wanted to get you to think, and I only have just a little bit here, but I wanted to get you to think about Josiah in the Bible. I wanted to give him as an illustration. I started thinking about him. I was praying over what God would have me to say today. And the Lord kept bringing back to me about Josiah. Jo Josiah was brought up in a palace stained with blood and foul with the vilest of sins. Think about that. Here's a boy that was brought up in the worst conditions where virtue was a crime and evil was good and the will of his royal boy, this, this royal boy, the will of it by empowering of God was determined to raise above the wickedness. You think, man, what about that? I mean, he didn't have a Christian family anywhere. The whole nation was wicked. The whole nation was wicked and was breeding with it. And he was determined to rise above it. Josiah loved God and hated his sin and hated sin, period, but he especially hated his own. And you know, I, you just wonder, how in the world did Josiah have the faith to change a nation? How? How did he have the faith? Let me read to you what God says. Over in um, 2 Kings 22, verse 8, I'm going to just read some portions of it. Here's Josiah, the high priest, and the scribes, and Josiah is sending out, and he's restoring the Lord's work. He's restoring the Lord's temple. And, and here goes the high priest and the scribe, and says, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And he, the Bible says, and he read it. He found the book of the Lord. He found the Bible. He found God's word. And all of a sudden, this high priest, they read through it, and they bring it to Josiah, and they start reading it to him. And it says, And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. Excuse me, here's a boy renting his clothes. Really? A boy? He could understand God's word? Are you serious? Yeah. God can, God's word penetrates the heart of children. When you're teaching children, have you ever been teaching a Bible lesson and a truth and all of a sudden you look in their face and you can see in their eyes that God, the Holy Spirit himself, turned the light on? I want to just jump up and say, "Woo, that's great. Because that excites me because it's not me. I'm just the messenger. You're just the messenger. Don't forget that. And here's Josiah. Can you imagine how he felt when he found the book. I mean, it changed his life. He ran his clothes. He realized what a sinner he was. And the word of God will help children realize that they're little sinners too. They're in bondage from birth. We forget that. We forget that they're so precious and they're so cute and they're so beautiful and they're so innocent. And we think, oh yeah, but they're in bondage too. And I think people forget that. Don't forget that with Josiah. And then I was also looking over here in 23, um, 2 Kings 23, 23 through 25, and I just want to show you how he ended up his life. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was hol holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. Listen to this. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and wizards and images and idols and the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book of Hekiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And this is what I really want you to think about. And like unto, th to, uh, this is what God says, remember. And like unto him, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose any like him. Excuse me, that's what God said about an eight-year-old child that started out. Can we, can children serve God? Yes, they can. Listen, let them serve the Lord. 
Let them serve the Lord. And that's, and you say, well, you know, they come on the bus. They don't have a good home. They weren't brought up. Their parents aren't Christians. Do you think Josiah had one glimpse? He only had God himself. Think about that. Don't give up on a child just because of where they live or what they do. Or maybe they're in church. Listen, I wasn't saved till I was 25. I went to church all my life. And I think there are more children that are in trouble with the Lord that are going to church every Sunday with a tie and a skirt and look great. And they have great parents. Because the next thing I was going to show you is just like with Timothy. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures and been assured of. Think about those words. And been, be, been, excuse me, and been assured of. I'll get it right. Think about assured. How is your child assured? that God's real? How's your Sunday school class assured that God's real? It's not because of what they see in your life. Oh, that she, God just does that for Ms. Washington. God just does that for Susie. That God just does that for Ms. Smith. How do you get a child to be assured that God is real? How do you do that? Here's Timothy. He was brought up the same, he was brought up with all the gospel. He was brought up with scriptures, but was Josiah any less useful and influential for God than Timothy? No. God used them both to their greatest potential. But what do we expect? Timothy exercises his faith. What is faith? You know, there's a lot of definitions in the Bible, but I got, uh, I received this from a Moody quote, and I thought it was very good. Faith is complete trust resting in God. Complete trust resting in God. Do you have faith? I know children that are in my Sunday school classes. Sometimes I think they have greater faith than I do. They have bigger obstacles than I do. Because they completely trust God for all he is. Don't demise that. Don't squash that. You know, children must have the word of God. I can't tell you that enough. If you're a Sunday school teacher or you're a parent, please, please, please. It's great to read Bible stories from a, Bible, from a book or curriculum to use to reinforce. But everything should be right out of this book. Everything. I tell my kids every single week, I ask them the question, and I've done it for years, how does God speak to us? I said, does he go down the street and say, hey, Gail, how you doing today? Hope you have a good day. You know, and kids think that's funny and all that kind of stuff, and they're like, no, that's not the way that God speaks to us. And it's the Bible. And how do we speak to God? Do we go screaming up and down? No, we've got to pray. Listen, I don't care if you've got a third grader. Even as soon as a child can know to fold their hands, they can talk to God. They can know what God's word says for them. Don't underestimate that. Listen, I have children that have come from all different kinds of situations. I had a little boy, and he's in seventh grade now, and his name is Kindred. And he always tells me, it's kindred like kindred in the Bible. And he makes sure, and some of you know him, and he's an, ex he's an exceptional kid. Something's different with him. He went in one of our ministry clubs. We have a lot of different ministry clubs. We have Sunday school, and then we'll have a 10 to 15 minute ministry club. And we'll have a Sunday school, like a teaching club, a preaching club, a missionary club, different things like that. And it's not no necessarily, they don't have to be called to be a preacher to be in there. But they can learn how to teach the Word of God. And we call it preaching for the boys and teaching for the girls. And um, if they like about missionaries and things around the world, they could go in that club. But it m more educates them about people serving God around the world. But anyway, he was in the preaching club. So he worked and worked and studied and studied and studied. And he's single. His mom's single. Single mom at home. Three other children. She works in an assistant living, doing the best she can. He hasn't been in the best situations. Um, praise the Lord, his mom became a Christian. And um, that's all part of it, too. But she became a Christian. And he was giving, he was going to be doing the little preaching session in the preaching club that week. He said, Ms. Washington, I've got to tell you my illustration. 
Now, this is very creative, okay? I don't think it exactly came out of the Bible, but it relates to the Bible, okay? But he said, do you know the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb? I said, well, yes, I know that song. I learned it a long time ago. And he goes, but think about it. Mary had a little lamb. Do you get it? His fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, he was sure to go. In other words, that's Jesus. Don't you get it? And see, he used that as an illustration. But do you see, he got the biblical truth. That's what it's all about. And by him going up in front of that little preaching club, he was assured that God had done something and told him what to say. We've had teenage boys preach out of Temple Baptist Church just not too long ago. And guess where they learned to get something from God? The preaching club. Because they understood that God could use them. And they were assured of. We need, we must have the word of God in children. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's the total foundation to doing the work of the Lord. Totally. We must guide children to have faith. Have you guided children to have faith? Have you, have you guided them to step out for the Lord? Maybe you might be at home. Maybe you ha- might have a daughter or a son. Have them tell a missionary story. Have them research it. Have them read it out. Have them do things. It'll change their life. You know why? Because they're going to say, hey, if God can use Mary Slesser, he can use me. That's what this Christian heritage is all about. That's what I love about Pastor Sexton and what he's done here. Because when you walk down these halls, it's not about seeing what we could get from about D.L. Moody. It's about if God could use a man that couldn't even read, that his grammar was so poor, then he can use me. That's what it's about. And that's what teaching children's about. That's the way you continue God's work through children. That's the way you do it. They need to be assured of God personally, not just in general. They need it personally. Listen, if you have a Sunday school class or you're involved working with children in a Bible club, we have Bible clubs, we do neighborhood Bible clubs, get them to do things. Get them to lead the singing once. Get them to tell their testimony. Teach them how to, if you really want to know if your class is saved or children are saved, get them to write their testimony out. You'll find out really quick. Because a lot of them think they're saved, but they're really not. And then some of them that really are saved, they do something bad and they think they lose their salvation. But get them to write it out. Teach them. Give your testimony. And get them to write it down. But you know, what it boils down to is this. If you're in, if you have a class, get them to do things. Get them to work. You say, well, we have kids that come in on our vans or come in on our buses or whatever it may be, and we don't really have time with them. Send them homework home. Send them one page of Mary Slessor and tell them, I want you to take this, and I want you to learn it so you can teach it in our class, a five-minute spotlight. I have a little girl named Aram. She's going to be in seventh grade next year. She's a jewel, loves God, was saved when she was in fourth grade, been very faithful. She got up in rally time and told, and I'm talking about shy. I'm talking about really shy. I'm like, what's your name, sweetie? Aram. I mean, that's the way it was the first time that I saw her. But she got up and she told the Mary Slesser story over half of it without even using notes. And, I, and, you know, she feels like she's been called to be a missionary. Do you know what the biggest thing, though? It wasn't about her giving the story. It was about her telling me, Ms. Washington, if God uses me, can use Mary Slesser, he can use me. And God wants me to be a missionary. That's priceless. Because she didn't just learn the scriptures. She was assured of them. So that's the one thought I wanted to tell you today. And we do all kinds of different things. We do. We had our uh, children's... Uh, brave boys and girls choir sing Sunday morning they have outfits and uniforms and that's been a big sacrifice and our people raise the money for that and we end up dressing them up and different things and you should see the assembly line it's it's quite an ordeal if you've been in second hour you know exactly what I'm talking about but they sang Sunday morning you know and they they were they sang great 
if you were here, you would have been, you wouldn't have known them from any church children's choir out there. You know why? Because they know God can use them. You know what we stress in there is not singing the best and the prettiest for themselves, not having the best voice, but singing for the Lord Jesus Christ himself and that God would be pleased with them. And do you know what? I heard they were changing back and there was this um, little girl and she was um, getting changed back and I could kind of hear them. I was outside the door and her and her friend, and her friend goes, man, I was scared. That was so scary. I saw those people. I couldn't see anything but people in those chairs. I was scared. I don't know if I like that. And the one little girl, she just got saved two weeks ago, turned to her and said, but, but think about this. We got to sing for the Lord. <laughs> and I thought, and I want to say, praise God. She got it. She got it. And that's what it's all about. And anything that you do, any kind of clubs, maybe you do master clubs. Brother Ab Thomas does a wonderful job with that. Maybe you do all different kinds of things like that. Some clubs, different, whatever. But remember, it's not about them just memorizing scripture and saying it. It's about them applying it and putting it in their heart. And then do some kind of exercise to make them practice the word of God. It will, I promise you, it will change their life. It will change their life. I have one little boy, and then I'll, I'll stop because I'm, what time do we have until here? Okay, we got one minute. Okay, I'll tell you this one story, and I've told it before, and, um, and I'll have some more practical things and details about what we do on Friday afternoon if you're here. If you're interested in that, I'll have some more details about how you can put that into practice. But I felt like it was so important to give you the philosophy, because to me, if we don't have our things in order as God would have them in order, all the methods, all the curriculums, all the big games, all the whatever entertainment, the activities are null and void. If they walk away without the assurance of God, it's null and void. I'm sorry, you're wasting your time. I've wasted some of my years, but I've learned in the 25 years that's what works when a child knows God's Holy Spirit has touched their life and used them, by the way, to lead their friends to Christ. I've had fourth graders lead their other friends to Christ, fourth graders, and rock solid and bring them to church and even told them about baptism. And they were God baptized. And I've even had children lead other children to Christ and their parents come and they got saved because of one child told their friend and I'll never forget one family, the man's hair was, I mean, he had long hair about down to here, and he came to get his, and you know, listen, it's not about the hair and all that, but I mean, when you put it this way, when God cleans up the inside, he cleans up the outside sooner or later, okay? So it's not about that, but I'm just saying, it was the most unlikely family that you would think, and they both came to church. And they saw their daughter baptized, and guess what? They walked down that aisle and trusted Christ as their Savior. And they were the most unlikely family. And they're still saved. They live in Greenback, Tennessee, still going to church, still serving God. And they're still, and because of one little girl, was interested enough in her friends. Encourage your classes to do that. There was one boy, when I was in Marathon, Florida, and I'm going to close with this, one more illustration. But there was one boy that was in eighth grade, or excuse me, eight years old. And he came to our Vacation Bible School. By the way, Vacation Bible School is extremely, extremely important. Don't let them weed it out, okay? It's very important. And if you can't do a Vacation Bible School because you can't, don't have transportation, then go to, the club, go to the neighborhoods. Do it in the front lawn. People will love you. for. They'll say, oh, free babysitter, great, you know? But you can do that. And I'm telling you, when many to Christ and parents to Christ, but there was a little boy that came to Vacation Bible School, eight years old. Trusted Christ as his Savior. Got saved, and, uh, got saved and came back to church and brought his family. His, a lot of his family got saved. He had 11 different aunts and uncles. It was, it was a Spanish family, a Latin family, and it was in Marathon. And little did I know these, um, this man comes up from the back during the invitation, and he's weeping. And it's his uncle. And he trusted Christ as Savior. And little did I know... He was a main kingpin for the cartel living in the Florida Keys. And his whole family, he went to prison, got out of prison, 
He's got a trucking business in Atlanta. And his whole entire family knows Christ as their Savior. And he even had an opportunity to witness to the man he was working for in jail. Now that, from one child, one child. And by the way, that eight-year-old boy is a, um, an accountant and a Christian history school teacher in Atlanta, Georgia, married to a Christian girl, loves God, with three children. You think that chain broke? One boy. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray that you would help us to teach children to be assured of and teach them the word of God. Oh, God, help us to reach this next generation. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.